Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm David Kerr from Lansing in Michigan, and these are your latest news headlines from around the world. Pope Francis has told the leadership of Ukraine that negotiation is not surrender, but instead is the courage not to lead a country to suicide. In an interview with the Swiss TV station that was recorded last month and broadcast this weekend, the Pope urged Ukraine to have, quote, the courage of the white flag. The Holy Father's comments were later clarified by the Vatican spokesman Matteo Bruni to mean ceasefire and negotiation rather than surrender. Urging the warring countries not to be ashamed to negotiate before things get worse, the Holy Father reiterated his willingness to act as a mediator between the countries in conflict to attain a peaceful outcome. Meanwhile, the Pope used his weekly Sunday Angelus address to pray for the people of Haiti. The Holy Father told pilgrims in St. Peter's Square that he was following events in the Caribbean nation with worry and sorry following the outbreak of widespread violence in recent days. He called upon everyone to pray for the intercession of Our Lady of Perpetual Help for an end to all violence. He also encouraged people to offer prayers and practical support so that peace and reconciliation can take root in Haiti. The Iowa House of Representatives has passed legislation that would recognise the personhood of unborn children at the moment of fertilisation, while also increasing penalties for those who cause the death of an unborn person without the consent of the mother. An unborn person, as defined in the new bill, is an individual organism of the species Homo sapien from the moment of fertilisation to live birth. At present, it is unclear whether the law would affect in vitro fertilisation, or IVF, in Iowa, while the bill does not expressly prohibit IVF, it also doesn't exempt human life created through IVF. Irish voters have rejected proposed changes to the country's constitution that would have redefined the role of motherhood and the family. Over 68% of voters rejected a proposal to remove a constitutional clause on the importance of marriage and family to society by inserting recognition for, quote, other durable relationships. Meanwhile, 74% of voters rejected an amendment proposing to replace a reference to a mother's duties in the home with a clause recognising care provided by family members. The turnout in the referendum that took place in Friday was 44%. The Irish Conservative advocacy group Family Solidarity say that both results carry a powerful message on the importance of preserving foundational values in the face of sweeping societal changes. The head of the US Bishops Committee on Pro-Life Activities says the Catholic Church opposes procedures like in vitro fertilisation or IVF because they cause large-scale loss of human life. Commenting in response to a proposal to enshrine a right to IVF in federal law, Bishop Michael Burbridge of Arlington said that human life is a unique gift with a measurable value from the moment of conception. Instead, Bishop Burbage expressed his support for ethical forms of therapy that address the underlying causes of infertility, as well as an increased support for options such as foster care and adoption. The United States House of Representatives is calling upon the US Secretary of State to redesignate Nigeria as a country of particular concern on their list of worst religious freedom offenders. A new resolution passed by congressmen and women accuses Nigeria of, quote, engaging in and tolerating systematic, ongoing and egregious violations of religious freedom. The US State Department released its annual religious freedom watch list earlier this year, but left Nigeria off the list for the third year in a row. A retired medical scientist in England is facing a trial following an allegation of breaching a local abortion buffer zone rule. 62-year-old Livia Tosici Bolt from Dorset has been charged with holding a sign that read Here to Talk If You Want near an abortion facility in the city of Bournemouth. The Council of Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole issued her with a fixed penalty notice. Mrs Tosici Bolt says she is refusing to pay the fine, however, on the grounds that she had the right to offer consensual conversations under Article 10 of the UK's Human Rights Act. Hence the case may now go to court. The president of Argentina, Javier Mele, says the act of abortion is murder aggravated by the bond between mother and child and condemned, quote, the voluntary interruption of pregnancy, which is a euphemism for abortion. President Mele made his comments during a speech at his old high school in Buenos Aires. Under the Argentine penal law, homicide aggravated by the bond is a degree of murder in which the killer and the victim are related by blood or intimate relationship. Hong Kong is on the verge of approving even tougher new national security laws. 
The draft legislation is called the Safeguarding National Security Bill. It was formally introduced to Hong Kong's legislature on March the 8th for vetting. Amongst other things, the draft law increases the maximum penalty from two years to ten years for crimes that incite hatred against China's communist leadership and the socialist system. The legislation will be Hong Kong's second national security law following the first that was imposed by Beijing in 2020. Over 35,000 people participated in a pro-life march in Madrid on Sunday. The event was organised by the Yes to Life platform. Speakers at the event emphasised the value of life as a precious gift and called upon policymakers in Spain to uphold life in all its forms and stages from conception to natural death. They also highlighted the fact that Spain currently spends 20 million euros assisting pregnant women compared to double that amount on abortion services. Finally, the Prefect of the Vatican's Dicastery for Eastern Churches has called on bishops worldwide to promote extraordinary generosity upon Good Friday when Catholics worldwide traditionally give alms to the Holy Land. Cardinal Claudio Gujarati emphasised the enduring bond between the Church and Jerusalem, highlighting the long-standing tradition of yearly collections for the Holy Land since the medieval era. The Cardinal pointed out that the challenges confronting Christians in the area stressing the importance of preserving the cultural and religious heritage of the land where Jesus walked the earth. And that's your latest headlines for now. Do join us for more tomorrow. You can also join us at swnews.org for news updates. Shalom.